University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. The first round matches are done, but not quite dusted. Four teams who lost their first matches are going to play again for the last two places in the second round because their losing scores were higher than the winning scores in some other fixtures. The Universities of Sheffield and York on 170 and 150 points respectively are playing again, which leaves three teams tied on 145 points each for the two remaining places in these playoffs. We judge that the two teams who reach that score on hearing fewer questions are the ones to go through. So we say goodbye to Downing College, Cambridge and invite Durham University and Jesus College, Oxford to play again. Now, the team from Sheffield University dominated the first half of their first round match, but then rather lost their grip on proceedings and allowed Wolfson College, Oxford to catch up and not only get themselves on level pegging at the gong, but to snatch victory on a tie-break question. Still, their score of 170 is the highest of the teams in these playoffs. With an average age of 23, let's meet the Sheffield team again. Hi, I'm Alistair Lal. I'm originally from Chiswick in West London, and I'm studying for a PhD in Metallurgy. Hi, I'm Sam Kelly. I'm from Seaford in East Sussex, and I'm studying English Literature. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm Jonathan Newhouse. I'm from Skipton in North Yorkshire, and I'm studying for a Master's in Cognitive Science. Hi, I'm Daisy Fry, I'm from Kent, and I'm studying politics. Now, the team from Jesus College, Oxford, suffered defeat at the hands of Manchester University, an institution with over 70 times their number of students. Their showing in the first half was a tad dismal, but once they got into their stride, they pulled themselves back into contention and were only 40 points behind at the gong. With an average age of 21, let's meet the Jesus team again. Hi, I'm Lucy Clark. I'm originally from Ottershaw in Surrey and I'm reading for a DPhil in early modern history. Hello, I'm James Cashman. I'm from Guildford in Surrey and I'm studying history. This is their captain. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm originally from Wellington, New Zealand and I'm studying philosophy, politics and economics. Hi, I'm Miranda Stevens. I'm from Seven Oaks in Kent and I'm studying biology. <laughs> well, everybody knows the rules by now, so let's just get on with it. Fingers on the buzzers, here's your first start at the 10. Beginning about 4.1 billion years ago, the Noachian period is thought to have been a relatively warm and wet phase in the history of which planet of the solar system? This period was followed by the Hesperian period, notable for the eruption of lava plains. Jesus Cook. Jupiter. Anyone like to buzz from Sheffield? Sheffield Newhouse. Mars. Mars is correct, yes. Your bonuses are on Britain in the 1960s. In 1963, a campaign led by the activist Paul Stevenson succeeded in overturning a ban widely referred to as a colour bar on minorities working in the partly council-owned bus service in which English city? Bristol. Bristol. Yeah. Bristol. Yeah. Bristol. Bristol's correct. Which supporter of the Bristol bus boycott was re-elected as MP for Bristol South East after an act of 1963 allowed him to renounce a hereditary peerage. He died in 2014. I think that's Tony Benn. Yeah. Tony Benn? Tony Benn is correct. And finally, which Conservative disclaimed an earldom and succeeded Harold Macmillan as Prime Minister in October 1963? 63, would that have been... Just not Eden... Heath? Yeah, I think Heath? Alex Hume. Sorry? Douglas Hume? It was Alec Douglas Hume, yes. <laughs> right, ten points for this. In which month of the year did the following fall? Culture Day in Japan, National Independence Day in Poland, the traditional Scottish Quarter Day of Martin Mass, Veterans Day in the United States, the Christian Festival of All Souls, and in 2018... 28- Jesus Clark. November. November is correct, yes. <laughs> you get bonuses on a US rock band, Jesus. Formed in New York in 1965, which influential rock band took its name from the title of a non-fiction work by Michael Lee about paraphilia? Its members included John Cale and Maureen Tucker. Mm-hmm. 
Velvet Velvet Underground. Correct. Which German-born singer is named on the Velvet Underground's eponymous debut album? Nico. Her single, Nico, is correct. Sure. Designed by Andy Warhol, the artwork for the album, The Velvet Underground and Nico, featured what fruit originally in the form of a peel-off sticker? Banana. Banana is correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> what general type of geographical feature links an allegory of education or enlightenment in Book 7 of Plato's Republic? Uh, and Jesus Clark. The cave. The cave is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on ecology, Jesus College. Originally an architectural term, what word did the US zoologist Robert T. Payne use to describe species that exert a major influence on their habitat and help to maintain biodiversity? Keystone. Keystone. Correct. Payne identified Bizaster ochraceus as a keystone species because it preyed on mussels that would otherwise dominate the seashore. To what general category of echinoderm does the species belong? Starfish? Starfish. Correct. The reintroduction of the wolf is said to have led to an increase in beavers, songbirds and willow trees in which US national park? It's part of an ecosystem known by the letters G-Y-E. Yellowstone. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Subjects of operas by which composer include a 5th century leader of the Huns, a king of Babylon in the 6th century BC, an 11th century king of Scots, a Shakespearean ah. knight... Jesus Cashman. Uh, Verdi. Verdi is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses are on pairs of countries in which the last three letters of one name begin the name of the other, for example, Belarus and Russia. In each case, give both countries from the description. Two countries, first off, whose UNESCO World Heritage Sites include, respectively, the cultural landscape of the Bamiyan Valley and the Serengeti National Park. Pass. It's Afghanistan and Tanzania. And secondly, a single island Pacific state that became wealthy from phosphate mining and a Latin American country that legalized cannabis in 2013. Is it Peru? Yeah. No, but no, but they, no, they don't, they won't stop. Um, Latin American part. Guatemala. I don't know, Aruba and Cuba. No, it's Nauru and Uruguay. And finally, two present-day European countries that fought one another in the Scanian War of the 1670s. Sweden. Um, yeah. Sweden and Denmark. Correct. <laughs> right, we're going to take a picture around now. If your picture starts, you'll see a sentence. For ten points, I want the two-word name of the font in which it's been typed. Sheffield Kelly. Comic Sans. Comic Sans is correct, yes. <laughs> That is one of the typefaces discussed by Simon Garfield in his book, Just My Type. Under the chapter heading, The Worst Fonts in the World, your picture bonuses are three quotes from that chapter, each written in the font they describe. Five points for each typeface you can identify. Firstly... Papyrus. 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 Papyrus, Papyrus is correct. Secondly, a two-word name here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I recognise that. Well, I... No, I don't know that one. Um... Um, no. Gothic italic. Okay, Gothic italic. No, it's brush script. And finally, this font was created specifically for which event? Oh, London 2012. The London 2012 Olympics. That is correct, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, ten points for this. In medicine, the term glomerular filtration rate measures the function of what organ of the body? Jesus Clark. The kidneys. Correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on a human action, Jesus College. In his story, The Mysterious Stranger, Mark Twain wrote that humanity has only one really effective weapon against the assault of which nothing can stand. What is it? Writing. Writing. Writing? No, it's laughter. Secondly, a plaque on the wall of a London department store declares the site to be the birthplace in 1788 
of which poet, and includes the quotation attributed to him, always laugh when you can, it's a cheap medicine. Shelley do much laughing? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> I don't so, know. I, guess, I, I, I think Byron. Byron might be a bit too early, but I don't Byron. know. Byron? It is Byron. <laughs> it's on the side of John Lewis. And finally, in which novel by Nietzsche does the title character say, false be every truth which has not had laughter along with it? Okay, uh, Fall of the Gods. Fall of the Gods? No, it's thus spoke Zarathustra. Ten points for this. Which decade saw the foundation of the cities of Montevideo and Baltimore, the dedication of Bach's Brandenburg Concertos, the publication of Swift's Gulliver's Travels, the collapse of the South Sea Company, ah. and... Jesus Cashman. The 1730s. No, you lose five points. And the accession of King George II. Sheffield Newhouse. 1740s. No, it's the 1720s. Oh. Right, ten points for this. I need the name of an SI unit here. What unit is used to express the physical quantity that is a homophone of a heavy item of jewellery worn around the neck and associated with Celtic civilizations? In its most usual form, it has the brief... Jesus Clark! Talk! Nope. You lose five points. In its most usual form, it has the abbreviation NM. You may not confer one of you can buzz Sheffield. Sheffield Lyle. Newton meters. Newton meters is correct, which is talk, of course, but I wanted the SI unit. So your set of bonuses this time, Sheffield, are on scientific terms. In each case, give the Arabic-derived English term from the definition. Firstly, a soft, colourless mineral used in cleaning products and as a component of glass. It consists of oxygen, sodium, hydrogen and another element whose name derives from that of the mineral. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, is that a, a colourless liquid? Colourless. No, no. It wasn't. I thought maybe acetone did that. Is that in silica. Okay. Um, should we go silica? Yeah. Silica. No, it's borax. Oh. The angle between a point on the horizon and a reference point, typically due north or south, along with altitude, it's used as a coordinate to define the positions of celestial objects. Sorry? I don't know. It's not. Is it parallax? No. Perigee. 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 No, it's azimuth. And finally, a systematic procedure typically followed by a computer which yields the solution to a given problem in a finite number of steps. Yeah, algorithm. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. What four letters appear at the beginning of a word meaning departing from an accepted type or standard and at the end of the names of a method of producing ammonia and a leading... Sheffield Newhouse. A-B-E-R. Correct. You get a set of bonuses on Scottish football clubs now, Sheffield. <laughs> Firstly, for five points, Sir Alex Ferguson's professional career began in 1964 when he signed with which club? Based in Fife, they won the Scottish Cup twice during the 1960s. So his, his managerial career started in Aberdeen, which is what yeah, I thought the question would be. Yeah. Fife? East Fife? Yeah. East Fife? East Fife? No, it's done firmly in athletic. Okay. Secondly, for five points, in 1978, what became the only club to dismiss Alex Ferguson as manager? This club's home ground is a few miles southeast of Glasgow Airport. Um, so, a few miles south, so would that be one of the Glasgow teams? So, the Celtic or Rangers? Or... Um, surely not. No. Um, well, it's not Aberdeen, is it? Which is the team I do know that he did manage. Um, um, they're Edinburgh, aren't they? Yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm just, just going to guess right. Uh, Rangers. No, it's St Mirren. After St Mirren, Ferguson managed which Scottish club, winning numerous trophies, including the European Cup Winners' Cup, in 1983? That was Aberdeen. Aberdeen. That was Aberdeen, yes. <laughs> right, time for a music round. For your music starter, you'll hear a piece of classical music. Ten points if you can name its composer. Jesus Cashman. Tchaikovsky. No. Anyone like to buzz from Sheffield? You might be able to hear a bit more. Sheffield Newhouse. Haydn. 
No, that was by Brahms. So, music bonuses in a moment or two. Ten points at stake for this. Fingers on the buzzers, please. Which royal borough close to the Antonine Wall was the site of a defeat for William Wallace in 1298 and a victory for Charles Edward Stuart in 1746? It is noted for gigantic equine sculptures known as the Kelpies. Jesus Clark. Falkirk. Falkirk is correct, yes. <laughs> right, you heard a bit of Brahms's academic festival overture there. According to an official commemorative album, it's regularly played at Nobel Prize ceremonies. Your music bonuses are three more frequent choices, which apparently meet the Foundation's stated criteria of being not too demanding and preferably well-known. <laughs> Name the composer in each case. Firstly... Nominate Clark. Smetana? No, it's Sibelius. It's a bit from the Karelia suite. Secondly... Rossini? No, that's Vorjak, part of his Slavonic dance number one. And finally... This is Greek. 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 Greek is correct. Morning from Pia again. <laughs> so, ten points at stake for this. Similar in height to Ben Nevis, Halti or Haltia is the highest point in which EU member state? It's located in the far northwest of the country in question. Sheffield Lyle. Finland. Finland is correct, yes. So your bonuses are on the sculptor, Hazel Reeves. Hazel Reeves' sculpture of the engineer Sir Nigel Gresley was unveiled at King's Cross Station in 2016. The accompanying plaque states that he designed which two elegant and fast steam locomotives? Uh, well, uh, uh, Flying Scotsman and the Mallard. Flying Scotsman, yeah. Uh, the Flying Scotsman and the Mallard? Correct. A 2012 work by Reeves depicts Sadako Sasaki, a young girl holding a folded paper crane, one of a large number of people known in Japan as Haibakusha. Sadako died in 1955 as a result of what event? She's only 45. Oh, right, OK, that's right, OK. Yeah, the dropping of the atomic bomb. That's correct, on Hiroshima. And finally, December 2018 saw the unveiling in Manchester of Reeves' sculpture of which political figure, born in Moss Side in 1858? Pankhurst. Pankhurst. Yeah. Uh, Emily Pankhurst. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. Issued by Pius V, the papal bull Regnans in Excelsis described which monarch as a usurper, ah. heretic... Jesus and... Clark. Elizabeth I. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on works in the collection of the Borghese Gallery in Rome. Sacred and Profane Love is an early 16th century work by which Venetian artist? Titian. Correct. Bearing the date 1507, who painted the ten-figure deposition of Christ, also known as the Borghese Entombment? He was born in central Italy in 1483. Raphael. Raphael is correct. You retake the lead. And finally, for five points, also in the Borghese Gallery, Boy with Fruit Basket, St. Jerome Writing and Young Sick Bacchus are among paintings by which Italian artist? Mm. Mm. Later, it could be Caravaggio. 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 Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. In the Olympic Games, what is the last event in the women's heptathlon? Britain's Kelly Holmes won gold in the individual... Jesus Cashman. 800 metres. Correct. <laughs> You're going to set the bonuses on dysfunctional families in television. 
Created by Mitchell Hurwitz, which comedy series centres on the once wealthy Bluth family in the aftermath of their father's imprisonment? Arrested Development. Correct. Which comedy drama by Jill Soloway revolves around the dysfunctional Pfefferman family with particular focus on issues of gender, sexuality and Jewish identity? Modern Family. That's transparent. According to its creator, David Chase, which acclaimed drama series developed from an idea for a feature film about a mobster in therapy having issues with his mother? The Sopranos. Correct. Ten points for this. In zoology, what two-word hyphenated expression is an alternative to the Greek-derived term poikilothermic and means having a body temperature that changes in response to ambient temperature? Sheffield Newhouse. Cold-blooded. Correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on mineralogy. Distinct from fracture or parting, what term denotes the tendency of minerals such as diamonds and slate to split along planar surfaces? Brittle? No, it's cleavage. Exhibiting perfect cleavage and widely used in electrical components, muscovite is the most common member of what mineral group? I need a four-letter term, please. Yeah, I don't know. You know what um, uh, could be. I mean, four it's letters. letters. <laughs> yeah, talc. No, it's mica. Easily identifiable from its perfect cleavage in three directions, galena is the chief ore of which metal known since ancient times? Is that copper? copper. I feel like it could be copper. Sure. Yeah. Copper? No, it's lead. Oh, sorry. Right, we're going to take another picture round now. To your picture starter, you're going to see a painting. For ten points, name the artist. Jesus Cashman. El Greco. El Greco is correct, yes. <laughs> that was his view of Toledo, the city where he spent the latter part of his life. Your bonuses are three more notable cityscapes. This time I want you to name the city depicted in each case. Firstly, name this city. The artist lived in its centre for 40 years. Paris. That is Paris, yes. That's Paris Street, rainy day by Caibot. Secondly, this city where the artist spent his whole life. Antwerp. No, that's Delft by Vermeer. And finally, this city where the artist lived intermittently throughout his life. That's Munch. Oslo. Oslo. Oslo, it is Munch, yes. Ten points for this. In its abbreviated form, what is the only SI unit to feature as part of the NATO spelling alphabet? Sheffield Kelly. Kilo. Kilo is correct, yes. <laughs> Sheffield, your bonuses are on an ancient writing system. From the Latin for wedge-shaped... What term denotes a writing system widely used in the ancient Middle East from at least 3000 BCE? Cuneiform. Correct. Which civilization produced the earliest attested works in cuneiform? Located in the southern part of present day Iraq, it was supplanted by Akkad and Elam. Yeah, Sumerian. Correct. The multilingual Behistun inscription of Darius the Great was significant in the deciphering of cuneiform. In which present day country is it located? Which yeah. 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 I think it'd be Syria. Do you think? Actually, no, you go. Okay. Uh, Iran. It is in Iran, yes. <laughs> Ten points for this. Give the fourth in this chronological sequence of Roman emperors. Galba, Otto, Vitellius and... Sheffield Newhouse. Vespasian. Vespasian is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on words that have the same three-letter ending. Give each word from the description. Firstly... A large blunt needle used for threading tape or cord. In Shakespeare's Hamlet, it refers to a short pointed weapon. Is that an awl? I think that's used in shoemaking and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Is that... Come on. Awl? No, it's a bodkin. Oh. Secondly, the common name of spinus spinus, a small finch with greyish green plumage and black and yellow markings that is resident in Britain. Yeah, it's going to end in kin. Um, Any birds ending in kin? Um, 
Sorry? Larkin? Yeah. Larkin? Larkin. <laughs> As in the lark, you mean? No, it's Siskin. <laughs> Thought to be from the Dutch meaning little trees or little barrel, an unsophisticated or socially awkward person from the countryside. Bumpkin. Bumpkin. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. <laughs> Level pegging. Three minutes to go. Conventionally denoted by the Greek letter eta and measured in Pascal seconds, which property describes the internal friction of a moving liquid? Sheffield Lyle. Viscosity. Viscosity is correct. <laughs> you take the lead. And your bonuses are on Greek mythology. In each case, name the figure from the description. All three names begin with the same two letters. Firstly, a daughter of Uranus and Gaia. She was the mother of Zeus and gives her name to the second largest moon of Saturn. Yeah. Rhea. Correct. Secondly, a ruler of Crete, ousted by his brother Minos. After his death, he was appointed one of the judges of the dead in the underworld. Just got under, got to get into that letter. No, I'm not getting anything. I know Minos is one of them, but... Um... Is it not? No, we don't know, sorry. It's Radamanthus. And finally, a nymph who married Hemus. The mountains that bear her name are in Bulgaria and northern Greece. Any idea about the mountains? Mm -hmm. It's got to, be, got to begin with R-H. I don't know. No. No idea? No. Um, no, no, we don't know, sorry. It's Rodopi. Ten points for this. What surname links the authors of the following non-fiction works, all published since 2006? Murder in Samarkand, The Strange Death of Europe, and 77, My Path... Jesus Cashman! Murray. Murray is correct. Yes. You could retake the lead with these bonuses. They're on geography. Which US state capital is situated on an isthmus between Lakes Mendota and Monona, about 100 kilometres west of Lake Michigan? Come on. Uh, pass. It's Madison, the capital of Wisconsin. Secondly, St Petersburg lies at the south of the Karelian Isthmus between the Gulf of Finland and which large lake? It's Lake Ladoga. And finally, the most populous of its country, which city is situated on the Isthmus of Tamaki to the west of the Hauraki Gulf? Uh, uh, Istanbul. No, it's Auckland. Ten points for this. Ah, happy, happy boughs that cannot shed your leaves nor ever bid the spring adieu. Those words refer to designs on what object in an ode by John <laughs> Keats? Jesus Cashman. Grecian urn. The Grecian urn is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses this time are on films of the 1960s. <laughs> Albert Finney and Leprechaun. Sheffield University have 165. Jesus College Oxford have 170. Well, Sheffield, I'm afraid we're going to have to say goodbye to you, but uh, 165, you led much of the way, and 165 yeah. is a, certainly a very good score, not quite as good as the highest score in the first round, but pretty good. Thank you very much. Jesus, we shall look forward to seeing you at the next stage of the competition. Thank you for joining us and many congratulations to you. I hope you can join us next time for the next highest scoring losers match. But until then, it's goodbye from Sheffield University. Goodbye. 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 It's goodbye from Jesus College Oxford. Goodbye. goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>